Hey Google, how old is the Python programming language? According to Wikipedia, the programming language Python was conceived in the late 1980s and its implementation was started in December 1989 by Guido van Rossum at CWI in the Netherlands as a successor to ABC capable of exception handling and interfacing with the Amoeba operating system. Thanks Google, it's a very long answer. Hey Siri, how old is the Python programming language? 31 years. <laughs> it's old, it's been around. And during that time, it has undergone a lot of versions. I just recently did a video comparing version 3.8 to 3.10 to 3.11, I believe. And even between those recent versions, there's a significant change in performance. Now, Python doesn't operate in a bubble. There is an ecosystem of modules. And I just came across this post right here by Sebastian Rashka. He's, I've mentioned him on the channel before. He does ML, but he's been blogging for almost 10 years. And here's a post from him from November 3rd, 2013, where he's comparing reading a data set in Python versus SQLite. SQLite, by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's just a, a database that's a local file. And uh, the only downside I can find that there's a size limit of 140 terabytes per data database file. That's that's a large database file. So this thing can handle quite a bit. Now, he actually has code samples in here that still run to this day, although there's a little change I needed to make. But I want to run this today and do a comparison to see if my results today beat his results from 10 years ago. Of course, of course they do. But is it Python or is it SQLite? or a little bit of both. Which one of those technologies got more love in the last 10 years? There's also the question of hardware, right? So I'm running this on very different hardware. So there's three different variables, but this maybe will show us how the ecosystem has evolved and moved on and allowed us to be where we are now. So he's got scripts for creating a database, not populating a database, so I had to kind of uh, do that myself. Now uh, he says he set up an example of 6.1 million lines in a single file. And he wanted to measure the CPU time that it takes to read the text file line by line using just simple Python code. And then read that text file to create a SQLite database. And finally query that database to see how long it takes to get those lines using SQLite. And his result from 10 years ago, or almost 10 years ago, here, I'll link to the down below if you want to check it out, by the way, and run it yourself if you're curious. We've got readlines.py, which is going to read lines in Python from a text file. And that took 19.4 seconds to read 6.1 million lines. Create SQLite DB, uh, don't really care about that one too much. We can see how long it takes to create. And finally, query SQLite DB. This is 1.4 seconds is how long it takes to read those same records from the database. So a huge difference there between reading it from the local database file versus just reading it in Python from a text file. Now, if you were using this tech in 2013, this is very vital information to know. Let's see if today, if this is just as vital. So I've um, copied those code files and I've set them up here. The only thing I needed to change was I'm using Python 3.9. So if you do Python version 3.9 and this time.clock function was actually deprecated in 3.8. So I just needed to hack in the time function and substitute it into the clock. In JavaScript, that's called monkey patching. I actually don't know what that's called in Python, but I monkey patched the time function to be the clock function so we can still use the same code that Sebastian wrote the rest of it at least let's go and uh, run these things the first thing i'm going to do is create that database done and you can see that right here there's a new db file now sebastian did not provide his feature one file that's actually used to read and write the data to it's a text file so i had to write my own and this is what i did write file basically we just uh, create a range of 6.1 million that is 6.1 million isn't it yeah i think i can actually write it like this wait what there to be more visible and i write basically the same line over and over again it doesn't really matter. So I need to run this to create that file. Let's run that. And there we go. We now have feature one dot text with 6.1 million lines in it. That didn't take so long, did it? No, let's read those lines and see how long that takes. 
Python read lines, and that did not take long at all, 0.4 seconds. So that's compared to his result, which was 19.4 seconds. Now here we're comparing the speed of Python improvements and the hardware. In this chart, he's using four times 2.8 gigahertz Intel Xeon with six gigs of RAM machine. And in my case, I'm using the M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. So hmm, might be a little bit faster hardware. <laughs> <laughs> and also we got the difference between Python, whatever version he was using back then, does he mention? I don't know, whatever version he was using in 2013 versus version 3.9, which is what I'm using today. Now let's write that data to the database. And we're doing that using the script create SQLite DB. This one's taking a bit of time, huh? So it's reading that file and dumping it into the database. And that took seven seconds. And in his case, it took 32 seconds. So writing is also much faster. Now let's read it from the database and we'll get our final number. Query SQLite DB, whoa, <laughs> 0.24 seconds. Wow, that is a huge difference, but it's not as big a difference as going from 19.4 seconds to 0.4 seconds. That is an improvement of 98% reading the lines in Python, whereas the SQLite read is an improvement of about 79%. I just did the calculation, it was edited out. Anyway, I'm not that good at math? What do you think? I'm a, some kind of math whiz? No. Anyway, a huge jump in performance, of course, of course, of course, this is to be expected, but it's nice to see how far we've come and more to go, I'm sure. There you go, folks. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. You have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye.